Let, let's put it broadly. What did you hear that was new at this conference, either in the methods themselves or in the way people were using them? So in, in the methods and tools uh, parallel sessions, we actually had an opportunity to hear 14 very interesting papers where, uh, that covered a rather broad set of different methods. Uh, in many of them, uh, scenario methods were used in different phases of the project, either scenario building or scenario analysis and, and backcasting and, and uh, real-time Delphi and, and um, and um, uh, also um, uh, various uh, technology road mapping approaches and, and uh, modeling approaches uh, had been used in different contexts and in, in the different application areas and also in different phases of the uh, foresight project. So uh, I think the lesson, uh, lessons le uh, lesson learned by listening to these uh, presentations was that there was not uh, um, kind of general uh, rule for selecting methods, and, uh, but, but uh, in each case uh, the process was designed for the specific context and the specific uh, um, client in question. So, and, and also um, in many of the cases various methods were uh, link, linked together and, and, but maybe there is still a need to, to uh, uh, develop the understanding of the proper way of linking different methods. But um, in any way, I, I think the, the, the papers and the presentations, uh, they in, in enrich our understanding of the, of the um, uh, need to, to uh, match the process and the methodology with the, with the context and, and also maybe it, they also give some guidelines how to do that. But um, then I also, also um, paid some attention to the, to the uh, conceptual framing of these uh, this, uh, foresight exercises and, and I noticed that, that there were quite many different types of uh, theoretical reference frames uh, when um, uh, talking about these uh, these exercises, so uh, first of all, there were a couple of cases where transition management was was the apparent framework, and then there was innovation theory uh, framework uh, framework also in use, and uh, also what was quite common was was uh, framing. Uh, in terms of uh, strategic decision support or, or policy support, but but also learning. Uh, process was used as a reference frame and risk assessment and also social construction as a general uh, way of uh, conceptualizing what is happening in the foresight process. Okay, thank you. I'm going to come here and, and ask Fabiana who edited the special edition of Technological Forecasting and Social Change from the last FTA conference whether, whether you had any sense of movement going on. What I've noticed is that I was a uh, uh, vice rapporteur together with uh, Annele and I share uh, her points. And what I, I noticed was that uh, there was a greater use of uh, IT tools to, uh, in methods and uh, also that uh, scenario is uh, and road mapping and the most uh, useful, uh, used method. And uh, in terms of uh, combination of methods is still uh, work and research has to be done there because uh, it's not straightforward to, to uh, apply different uh, methods to a specific exercise and uh, um, depends very much on the context and also we don't have to forget that sometimes uh, some method needs to have, uh, you need to be capable to apply, it. you need to have your own knowledge on the method to be able to, to implement it. And uh, uh, what, uh, what uh, came out also, it was uh, in, uh, that we don't have in the uh, FTA uh, community any standardized method. So this is a, a question. Do we, do we need to standardize our, our methods? And 